My name is Zahir and I'll be talking to you about convoluted structures and laminations and flame structures. Firstly, to clarify, the difference between bedding, beddings and laminations is that beddings are greater than one centimeter in thickness and laminations are less than one centimeter. Now, convoluted structures are structures formed by complex folding and crumpling of beds or laminations into small scale anticlines and synclines. It is commonly confined to a single bed and they have little to no effect on the strata above or below them. As you can see on the diagram here, a convoluted structure has formed into an irregularly shaped anticline and syncline and there are a couple of laminations above it. And here is a real life example of a convoluted structure forming irregular anticlines and synclines in the layers. Now onto flame structures. Flame structures are a type of convolute structure which protrude into the bedding above forming wavy structures or flame like patterns. The rounded protrusions indicate the base of the sandstone and the flame, the flame patterns indicate the protrusion of the mud or shale layer. Here is an actual example of a flame structure where you can see the mud or shale layer is protruding into the sandstone. Hi, my name is Ayman. I'm going to, I'm going to talk about how the concrete bedding and flame structure are formed. Firstly, the convolute bedding. Convolute beddings are formed by plastic deformation of partially liquefied sediment. The formation starts when there is a flow of overlying fluid above the sediment. For, a, for an example, you can see from the image, the green arrow indicates the direction of the fluid flow. The fluid then creates a shear stress. This shear stress drags the sediment to the direction of the fluid flow. Eventually, the layer of the sediment will become folded and the convolute bedding are formed. Next, the flame structure. Flame structure is formed when the underlying bed has a higher density than overlying bed. Due to the difference in, uh, in density, it creates an unstable situation. As you can see from the image, the, the yellow region is the overlying bed which is the sandstone layer and the grey region is the water saturated mud layer which is the underlying, underlying bed. The mud layer is under pressure condition. This causes the high density sand layer force the sand into the underlying mud. As a result, the, mass, the mud force up through the sandstone layer and form a flame structure. Hello. My name is Joshua Johnston and I'm going to be talking about depositional environment. Convolute bedding and laminations need to be deposited in a wet environment. This allows them to be saturated and act like a viscous liquid. They also need to be deposited in high energy locations to allow the necessary deformation. Examples of locations like these are wavy shallow marine, as shown in the diagram here, where the waves provide the energy for the deformation, or deep water, where turbidity currents provide the necessary energy. It is also common for deposition to be in a sandstone shale sequence. Flame structures also require water saturated environments, but not as much energy. This is as they result from density difference, as mentioned earlier. Examples of this kind of location are shown in the following diagrams. The first of which is a floodplain. Next is intertidal flats, and the last one are deltas. It is also noteworthy that convolute bedding scenarios are perfect for hydrocarbon reservoirs, as shown in the diagram here. Their deformation creates appropriate anticlines, and the sandstone shale sequence creates the desired source rock, reservoir rock, and seal combination. Thank you very much for listening.